On the day my mom passed away, my sister-in-law made a hurtful joke, saying I slept in and missed the funeral. She then mentioned she wouldn't be attending. It made me angry because she had convinced my sick mom to spend a lot of money on a new house, and now she was acting this way. Trying to keep calm, I warned her she'd regret it. But she just hung up. Later, at the funeral, even my usually gentle brother was furious with her. My name's Lisa. I'm 28, single, and have a good job that keeps me busy. Despite everything, I'm doing okay. Today is a day off from work, so I went back to my mom's place after a long time. I greeted her, and we had a nice chat over tea. My mom is a kind and elegant person, but she's been living alone since my dad passed away a few years ago. Both dad and I always worried about her health, because she's not very strong. Whenever I have time off, I make sure to visit mom and spend time with her. During our chat, I asked if anything troublesome had happened lately. Just as she was about to tell me, the doorbell rang. Mom said it might be Stephanie. Stephanie is my brother's wife. They recently got married, and she's my sister-in-law. I often wonder how my quiet brother ended up with someone as talkative and pretty as her. Although I sometimes find her unexpected visits a bit annoying, I appreciate her caring about our mom. When Stephanie came in, she greeted us cheerfully. She mentioned how long it had been since we last met and then started talking about my job in accounting. She said she's too busy with housework and hinted that it would be nice if I got married soon too. Yeah, maybe my sister-in-law acts timid around my mom, but sometimes she makes these sneaky comments to me. I'm not sure if she's trying to be mean, but it definitely makes me feel uneasy. Looks like my sister-in-law's here too, so I'll head out, I told mom when I said goodbye. She agreed and said we should catch up more next time before seeing me off. As I left, I couldn't help but wonder if mom was really okay with my sister-in-law. She's not one to gossip or complain, so I worry she might be keeping her feelings inside. A few months later, mom told me that my brother was building a fancy new house. Hmm, my brother makes a good living, but he's not super rich, right? And my sister-in-law doesn't work, so how are they affording such a big house? I wondered aloud. Well, I actually helped him out with some money from your father's inheritance. Mom confessed. How much? I asked. Around $20,000, Mom replied. 20 k Mom, are you serious? I exclaimed in shock. My dad always taught my brother and me to be self-sufficient once we grew up. So I couldn't understand why Mom would give away such a large amount of money. Stephanie, your sister-in-law, kept coming over almost every week, asking for help. I just couldn't say no, especially since Andrew and Stephanie promised to take care of me when we all lived together. I felt like I had to help, Mom explained. Well, if you're sure about it, Mom, but aren't you worried you're giving too much? I asked. No, not at all. This will make things easier for you, Lisa. I'm actually excited about our new life together, Mom replied with a smile. They went ahead and built their house, and my brother, his wife, and Mom moved in together. When I visited to give them a housewarming gift, I was amazed by their luxurious house. It had a modern kitchen and bathroom, fancy interior with real wood, and a big backyard. There was no way my brother could afford all of this on his own. My sister-in-law proudly gave me a tour of the house, and when it was over, I pulled my brother aside quietly. Congratulations on the new house, Andrew. Please make sure to take good care of mom. Thank you, Lisa. Don't worry, Stephanie will take care of mom while I'm at work, he assured me. I felt guilty about mom contributing money, but we're determined to ensure she's even happier from now on. It seems my brother wasn't aware that his wife had been asking mom for money for the new house. He's a good and kind person, but sometimes he can be a bit clueless. Okay, just make sure you both take care of mom. And you, focus on your job, I advised. Let's not talk about work. Oh, sorry, my bad, he replied. After our conversation, I gave my brother an envelope with some cash and a standing clock. This clock can help monitor health. So please put it somewhere in the living room where mom can see it easily. Wow, this clock is really advanced, huh?
but it could be helpful for mom. And it looks stylish too. Let's place it here, my brother said, setting the clock on a shelf in the living room. I should head home now. Take care, I said. My sister-in-law was busy on the phone in another room, so I left the impressive house with my mom and brother seeing me off. Six months had passed, and it seemed like my mom, who had been a worry, was doing well with my brother and his wife. I was able to focus on my work, thinking that these peaceful days would continue, until I received the heartbreaking news of my mom's passing. When my brother came back from work, he found our mother had stopped breathing. It appeared she had passed away alone in her room. The doctors at the hospital said her existing heart condition, worsened by stress, was likely the cause of death. Mom, why now? I wish I had come home sooner. I'm so sorry, my brother and I held onto our now lifeless mother, tears streaming down our faces. My sister-in-law, Stephanie, was not there at the time. Brother, wasn't Stephanie supposed to be home? And what do they mean by overwork? I asked, feeling puzzled. No, she wasn't home. And about the overwork, I'm not sure. Stephanie took care of all the household chores, so it doesn't make sense, my brother replied, sounding confused. Feeling uneasy, I said, Well, first things first, we need to arrange mom's wake and funeral. You'll probably need to take the lead as the chief mourner, Andrew. You're right, Lisa. Can you help me? My brother asked. So my brother and I started working hard to prepare for the memorial service. It was chaotic, trying to organize everything for my mother's funeral, finding a place, making plans, reaching out to people, and more. Somehow, we managed to get through the wake, and the next day was the funeral. While my brother and I were busy with visitors, my sister-in-law just sat around doing nothing. Stephanie didn't lend a hand or show any emotion. Despite feeling increasingly frustrated with her, the hustle and bustle of the moment kept me from confronting her. Andrew, tomorrow's the funeral, and you'll be quite occupied as the chief mourner. Why don't you and Stephanie go home for a bit? I'll stay here, I suggested. Yeah, I appreciate that, Lisa. Thank you, my brother replied. After they left, I got my work laptop out in the now empty room and started working. I barely slept throughout the night. The next morning on the day of the funeral, even though it was scheduled to start at 10 a.m., I met up with my brother at 6 a.m. to get ready. We were swamped with preparations, going over the eulogy my brother had written as the chief mourner, meeting with the funeral director, and more. My brother mentioned that Stephanie would join us later for the actual funeral. And then, around 9.30 a.m., I got a call from Stephanie. Hello, Lisa. I'm calling because Andrew isn't answering his phone. Okay, and, um, I just woke up, overslept. I won't be able to make it to the funeral. Strumbling to keep my voice steady and not let my anger show, I replied, okay, but you might regret missing it, you know? Stephanie, I don't think that's a good decision. Anyway, I understand you're busy, but try to hang in there. I said before Stephanie hung up. Hey, was that Stephanie just now? My brother approached and asked. Yeah, she overslept and said she's not coming today, I replied. What? That's unbelievable. It's our mother's funeral, my brother exclaimed. Let's just focus on the funeral, Andrew. I'll talk to you about something afterward, I said, trying to keep things calm. Somehow, we made it through the funeral together. My brother and I paid our respects to our mother's remains but Stephanie was still nowhere to be found. What was she thinking, not showing up for her own mother-in-law's funeral? By the way, Lisa, what did you want to show me? My brother asked, trying to shift focus. Sure, Andrew, take a look at this, I said, pulling out my laptop. What is, oh? Displayed on the screen was the living room of my brother's house. It dawned on my brother that the clock I had given him as a gift had a hidden camera installed meant for keeping an eye on elderly folks or pets. I had given it out of concern for mom, but since she seemed fine, I didn't want to invade anyone's privacy, so I hadn't looked at it until now. However, yesterday, I decided to check the footage from the past week. Here it is, I said, opening a few videos. My brother watched them closely, holding his breath. What the footage showed was heartbreaking. 
My sister-in-law was exploiting our mother, harshly assigning all the household chores and tasks to her, from cooking to laundry to cleaning. My frail mother was being forced to work to exhaustion. While mom was busy with the housework, Stephanie would slack off and go out. In the footage, you could occasionally see mom clutching her chest in discomfort and hesitating to call someone on her phone, only to decide against it. Mom couldn't tell us about the mistreatment she was enduring from Stephanie. She always wanted our happiness, you know, mom. I had no idea. Please forgive me, both my brother and I saw. The pain of seeing our mother in such a situation was almost unbearable. Lisa, can we see the footage from the day mom passed away? My brother asked me. Um, I haven't checked it, but mom passed away in her own room, so I don't think we have any recording of her. I replied, setting the recorded footage to the date our mother passed away. After finishing her morning chores, my mother was seen clutching her chest as she headed towards her room. They said she passed away around 2 p.m. The living room was empty for a while. But as we fast-forwarded the recording, Andrew spoke up, Hey here, stop it and turn up the volume. Around noon, my sister-in-law appeared on the camera. When we turned up the volume, we could hear her voice. Hey, mother-in-law, mother-in-law. My sister-in-law called out towards my mother's room. But when there was no response, she seemed to assume my mother wasn't there. She then sat down on the sofa and made a phone call. Hello, thanks for being with me just now. It seems like the old lady is out and about, leaving the house chores half done. Wonder what she's up to? It sounded like she was talking to someone she had been with since morning. Hearing the harsh conversation, I couldn't help but grimace. My sister-in-law continued, What, she's dead? That would be something. But then again, I could skip the funeral and maybe go on a trip with Daniel. I mean, opportunities like these don't come around very often. My brother and I stared in disbelief. The person on the other end of the line was my sister-in-law's lover. Wouldn't it be nice if that really happened? Then I could make up some story about domestic abuse for my husband, get a big divorce settlement, and buy this house. Then Daniel and I can live here together. My sister-in-law continued her conversation. So, where do you want to go if we take that trip? I'm thinking. My brother abruptly interrupted. He stopped the video, his expression changing from his usual kind and gentle demeanor to one filled with anger. Lisa, I need your help. We're going to confront her. I nodded in agreement with my brother's words and immediately made a phone call. The next day, my brother called while I was at home. Lisa, she's back. Can you come over? He asked urgently. Of course, I'm on my way. I replied, rushing over to my brother's house. As I arrived, my sister-in-law came out to greet me with a forced smile. Well, hello there, Lisa. What brings you here on such short notice? You really should have let me know you were coming, she said, looking slightly annoyed. Andrew called me here. Please come this way, my brother interjected, leading us inside the house filled with the scent of incense. We all sat down at the dining table. What's going on, you two? It sounds serious, I said. I do feel bad about missing the funeral. I addressed my sister-in-law, Stephanie, in my usual tone. But ever since you moved in, you've been treating our mother like a servant, haven't you? And even though she was sick, you made her pay $20,000 for the new house. Ha! Huh. What are you talking about? I did all the housework. Are you trying to start a fight? Stephanie retorted defensively. Actually, everything has been recorded. I'm not actually an accountant. I'm a private investigator, I revealed. My brother was the only one who knew. I pointed to the surveillance camera embedded in the living room clock and showed her my phone. The video of my mother doing housework under my sister-in-law's command was on the screen. What? This is a violation of my privacy. What were you thinking? Delete it now. Stephanie raised her voice, clearly alarmed. I installed it. As the owner of this house, I have the right to do so. It's not a violation of privacy, my brother calmly responded. What's going on with you two? And what do you mean by private investigator? Stephanie froze, realizing something was amiss. My brother silently got on his phone 
and the audio of Stephanie's phone call began to play. I might just skip the funeral and go on a trip with Daniel, and maybe make up a story about domestic abuse from my husband for a big divorce settlement. As the recording played, Stephanie's face went pale. Now this isn't what it seems. Please, hear me out, she pleaded. What's the difference? Tell me, my brother demanded. Caught off guard, Stephanie began to make awkward excuses. Well, he's just a friend. We were joking around. I didn't cheat. There's no evidence, right? But there is, I said, spreading out several pictures on the table. Images of Stephanie coming out from a nearby resort with a man, being intimate in their car, and even entering a hotel on their way back, clear evidence of cheating. What? What's this? How did you get these? Stephanie's voice trembled. You mentioned it over the phone, didn't you? You talked about where you wanted to go on your trip and how you planned to spend the night together with him. I had someone from our company take these photos, my brother explained. How could you do such a thing during our mother's funeral? I calmly spoke. Oh, enough. What's wrong with you all? Stephanie burst out. There's no way we can stay married after this, Stephanie. We're getting a divorce my brother declared. But I'm going to demand plenty of alimony, and you're going to have to move out of this house. Stephanie countered. Excuse me? My brother and I exchanged a glance, stunned by her audacity. I mean, when people get divorced, the wife receives alimony, right? Now, hurry up and give me my money, Stephanie demanded. Um, actually, that's not true. Since you cheated, you're the guilty party, and you're the one who will have to pay compensation to my brother, I intervened. What? Clearly, you're even more foolish than I thought. Pitiful, just as Lisa said. I'm going to demand alimony from you and from your lover as well, my brother added. What? And besides, it's for me to tell you to leave. Don't ever come back, Stephanie retorted, growing more agitated. No, this must be a lie. Stephanie muttered as I handed her a return suitcase and escorted her to the entrance. After closing the door, I gently patted my downcast brother's shoulder. Six months later, my brother's divorce from Stephanie was finalized. She tried to take it to mediation, but the evidence my brother had gathered made it clear to the mediators who the guilty party was. It turned out that Stephanie had been squandering the money from their joint bank account. So my brother was able to divorce her with almost no division of assets. After that, just as he had declared, my brother claimed alimony from Stephanie and her lover. The lover, who had planned on moving in with Stephanie using the alimony from my brother, was outraged by the alimony claim and immediately broke things off with Stephanie. Having nowhere to live and being dumped by her lover, my former sister-in-law is now said to be living alone in an old apartment working part-time. My brother went through a period of depression. He eventually sold the house, stating that he was done with marriage. Now he lives alone. Seeing my brother looking so lonely, I've been considering introducing him to a kind woman I recently met through work. She's also a divorcee, so they might be able to relate to each other easily. With those thoughts in mind, I head out and work hard again today.